by listening to our prelude, Prelude in C by Bach. Sunday morning. We have a number of announcements. First off, all Bethany news articles are due tomorrow to Bill and Dot, so please get those in so that they can put together our newsletter for us. Um, in addition, I will be away this week, so if you need pastoral care for any reason, please reach out to Andy Gorman, Gor Gordon, not Gorman, Gordon, whose phone number is listed in your bulletin on the insert. Or call the office and Michelle and she will help make sure that you get whatever help you need. Um, that being said, there will be no Bible study because I will not be here. Um, there will be quilting tomorrow. Yes, quilting will be happening tomorrow. So please feel free to come and do that if you can tie a knot, whether or not you've come before. They're a fun group and all you have to do is tie a knot. I believe in you. Um, Something really exciting coming up. We officially have a date for our picnic. It will be set September 22nd. We will be having an outdoor worship service in honor of the season of creation. I thought it would be nice to worship out in creation. So we will be having a modified worship service that day starting at 1015 with the picnic to follow. It will be behind the church office building, which is right next door to the church on Morgan Avenue. Yes, thank you. Still learning names. Um, along with the season of creation, if you haven't signed up to bring flowers or pretty potted plants that you would like to take home or plant afterwards, uh, we are accepting flower donations. Nothing fancy, not from a fancy florist or anything, but you know, grocery store, produce junction, your own homegrown flowers. We're accepting throughout the month of September and the first week in October. We do have a number of Sundays still available. Please see the green, green sign-up sheet in the back of the church in the narthex. Um, also, this week we have a birthday to celebrate. Happy birthday to Kathy Austin. Uh, we listed her as Katherine Snyder because I can't read. But happy birthday to Kathy for this week. Do we have any other announcements? Wonderful. With that, I invite you to rise as you're able as we begin our service with the order of confession and forgiveness of sins as found on page 95. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the 
presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your, your compassion, forgive us our sins, known no, and unknown. No, no. Things, things we have done and things we have failed to do, turn to us again to you and our helpless by your spirit, spirit, so that we may live, live and serve you in your newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, hymn number 858.
Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. First reading is Proverbs 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Next is Psalm 34. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lion is more than one to shall suffer on but those who seek the Lord will be back to good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who will not be taking pleasure in your life and desire long life to endure love Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Okay, second reading is Ephesians. Five. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able to the gospel. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood Abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Now they get out of it because they're not here, but two of our young people did their first communion class this week, and so the next time they're in worship, they're going to get to have their first communion together with all of us. And if they were here, I would be asking them, oh, you know, what did you think? What do you remember? Because let me tell you, I can remember helping to teach a lot of first communion classes, but I don't remember my first communion at all. I have no memory of the classes beforehand or the worship where it happened. The only memory I have, really, is from before I received communion. 
well before, when I was in the church nursery, and I was, yeah, three, five, maybe. And I remember being in the church nursery when Miss Lizzie would listen to the loudspeaker that boomed the church service throughout the church. She would listen for when the great Thanksgiving would, would start, when we started singing that part. And she would gather up all of us kids and we would be crying because we had to leave our crafts and our toys. And she would gather us up, march us over to sit on the steps outside of the sanctuary and wait our turn. And somewhere she would slip us in and without really knowing what or why, we would kneel down, get a blessing, maybe sneak a piece of bread here or there, and go on back. I don't remember much, but I do remember knowing that there was something special happening, even if I didn't quite understand it. But it's amazing how much, as we start to learn, how much we understand when we're children about communion. It was amazing, as I talked with the kids this week, where I thought they would have problems, you know, bread, wine, Jesus? That's a little bit of a hard math equation there. They were fine with that. That makes sense to them. I was talking this week to a pastor who shared with me about how the children at her church, when she asked them what the bread and the wine are, what communion is, they immediately cry out, Pastor, it's Jesus! And so they go through the line and receive Jesus eat the bread, drink the wine or the grape juice, and they immediately go to the back of the line because they need seconds. <laughs> because, Pastor, don't you know, we never have enough Jesus. <laughs> From the mouth of babes. There's a moment there to hear the wisdom in that. These kids know that Jesus is really there. They know that they need Jesus. I think sometimes we overcomplicate communion. We try and puzzle out how exactly bread and wine are body and blood, but all we really need to know is that Jesus is truly present in, with, and under the bread and the wine, and that we are able to joyfully receive him, knowing that we are loved and forgiven. If you take nothing else from this sermon, if you tune me out for the rest of the time, remember that. Remember that Jesus is present each and every week with you in that morsel of bread and sip of wine. Because we believe what Jesus says in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke during the Last Supper, when he says that this is my body given for you, this is the cup shed for you and for forgiveness of sins, we trust that Jesus means what he says. And there are times that I feel that. There are times where I can't help but cry in gratitude over this precious and undeserved gift. I remember one time I was on a retreat, and I had been struggling with something that I felt really guilty about. A situation where I felt like I failed and I made things worse. It was really hard on myself. And so when the pastor lifted the bread and the wine, proclaiming forgiveness and love, I couldn't help but tear up. I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel like Jesus should give himself to me, somebody who messes up everything I touch and can't get one thing right. I felt like backing out of the circle, saying, no, 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 not me. I can't have this. But the pastor went around the circle, giving each person the bread and the wine. And she got to me, and as she placed that bite of bread in my hand, and I dipped it in the wine, I didn't try to wipe away the tears falling down my face. Because how could I? If Jesus says that I'm forgiven in that moment and gives me bread and wine to help me know it, how can I help but to be full of gratitude? To receive love made physical in ordinary bread and wine. What a gift. And yet there are other times where I come to the table and I don't really feel much. Sometimes it just feels like a mundane thing. I remember one time growing up, following my grandma to the altar rail. She didn't come to church much. The pews were hard. It was hard to sit. But she came that week. And I remember kneeling with her as I received the cardboard-like wafer <laughs> and the wine that seemed so bitter to me as a kid. 
and as soon as we slipped out the side door to return to our seats, I started making faces. Grandma, that wine is horrible. And she grinned conspiratorially. You're right. It's always bad. I have a Tic Tac with me. I always have one. Do you want one? My grandma always carries a cough drop or a Tic Tac or a breath mint with her when she goes to receive communion. She hates the taste of the wine. And she holds up that bright, that container of bright orange mints. We laugh, we take a Tic Tac and return to our seats. I hated the taste of that little wafer and wine. It didn't seem worth it to go through all that. And yet now, the taste of those very same wafers and that same Manischewitz wine is intrinsically tied to communion for me. I can't look at a bottle of Manischewitz and not think about communion. But whether or not I feel something, whether or not communion feels special to me on any given week or day, whether or not I go through the motions or really stop to think about it, the truth remains. Christ's body and blood are set before us each and every week in a feast of love and forgiveness. Ordinary food is made extraordinary in the words of Christ. We are invited to come to the table whether we're hungry or tired, weighed down by guilt or pain, distracted. We are invited to come as we are and to receive that gift of forgiveness and grace. Luther writes in the large catechism, as Christians, we confess that we receive the very body and blood of Christ in, with, and under the bread and wine in our hands and in our mouths. And this is a profound wonder and an unexplainable mystery. And what a mystery that is, that Christ would offer himself to us in such a way. I have to say, it's a little bit baffling what we read in the gospel. Jesus, just on a random day, starts talking about eating my flesh and drinking my blood. Whoever eats me will live because of me. I can just imagine the disciples standing to the side as Jesus has been addressing this crowd the whole time. This crowd that followed him from the feeding of the 5,000. This crowd that was ready to do whatever he asked, to follow him wherever he went. And I can just imagine the disciples so thrilled to have more people joining them, more people who might have money to support the cause, more people to do the work, as Jesus starts talking about eating his body and drinking his blood. That's not a very good evangelism strategy, Jesus, I have to say. And I can just imagine the disciples' faces falling as he talks. As, he know, as they know that Jesus is driving some of these people away with every word he says. Because, my goodness, it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? To eat body and blood, and it sounds funny. It is funny. But unlike the crowd, unlike the folks who were gathered there that day, we have the benefit of living on this side of the crucifixion and the resurrection. We know that Jesus is talking about communion. We hear the echo of those words in this text. And so we gather, week in and week out, at the table which Christ prepares for us. We gather to hear the words that we can never hear too often, that this is my body given for you. Not for that person, not for that person, not for all those other people, for you. Jesus Christ has given his body for each and every one of you. And we gather to receive that body, to become that body for the world. Because yes, communion is a mystery, and if you ask me to explain it in a way that you will absolutely intellectually grasp, we will never ever get anywhere. But how Christ is present in bread and wine, how these things manage to communicate grace to us, how we can be worthy just by trusting that they are given for us, these things are mysteries. And what a wonderful mystery it is. What an amazing gift. 
What good news is it that we don't need to do anything to earn this gift? That Jesus comes to us freely, giving himself entirely to each of us. And so let us eat and drink. Let us come to the feast set before us, whether or not we feel it this week or next week. And remember that something special is happening here. Jesus Christ is present in bread and wine. God is present for each and every one of us. Let us remember what the kids seem to grasp so easily. It's Jesus. And what do we need if not more Jesus? In God's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, Break Now the Bread of Life, hymn number 515. Please rise as you're able. wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we need throughout possible merciful God. Receive our prayer. Wisdom has mixed her wine May the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, 
vineyards, farms, and all creation. Protect and conserve the earth. Merciful God. Merciful God. Our prayer. Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Merciful God. Peace our prayer. Wisdom has invited her guests. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or hurting at this time. Direct your spirit of care, all who seek healing and comfort, especially Phyllis Hess, Linda Patton, Melva Beckler, Erna Bauer, Stephen Moore, Judy Kohler, Frank Sarcone, Elsie Hoffman, Don and Donna Flack, Taya Williams, Helen Willard, Ann Dietz, the family and friends of Brian Fleming Jr., and the family and friends of Matthew Dixon. Merciful God, wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek the refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on her path, looking toward a bright future, while remembering from where we have come, we give our thanks for those who have gone before us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Please rise as you're able. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. At this time, I invite you to please be seated as we prepare to receive our offering.
creation. All that you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all those in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn, He Lives, which is found on the back. 